All right, guys, welcome back to Formula One drama. Ferrari arguably in crisis heading into the 2023 season with Mattia Bonotto resigning his post as team principal and technical director for the Scuderia. Who is going to replace him in this role? Did he jump before he was pushed? But also, where does he go next? Rumors already circulating. Mercedes might be interested. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. Ferrari announcement earlier on today, an official confirmation. Funny really how this worked, isn't it? Because we saw only a couple of weeks ago, Ferrari was saying, nothing to this story, guys. Don't worry about it. It's totally without foundation that Matteo Bonato is going to leave. But we've talked about it on this channel for a few days. This was inevitable. It was coming and it was confirmed this morning. So Matteo Bonato technically resigns from his post, obviously in contrast to this. But in fairness, Scuderia Ferrari a couple of weeks ago now said that, yeah, there's no, basically they were talking that he was going to get fired. And they said, that's not true at all. Now, as it turned out, he hasn't been fired. But the real, like, look, he hasn't left on his own volition right he obviously would have stayed if uh, they'd have wanted him to stay but I think it was quite clear from the relationship he has with the president there John Alcan that it wasn't going to happen and even Juve right Juventus that I believe John Alcan is also working with they fired like their entire board this morning as well so it's an absolute nightmare for a couple of days all right yeah that guy is just definitely clearing house everywhere and building again from the ground up now uh, look Matteo Bonotto has been with Ferrari for about 28 years like he's been there a long time this is him back in 1997 worked his way up with the engine department onto different roles to become the technical director and team principal and that is the difficulty for Ferrari not only do they need a TP they also need a guy to head their technical division especially when Bonotto apparently might take or well take some of his guys with him or at least some of those guys might leave anyway not happy with what's happening at Ferrari so I mean look he's won with Ferrari an awful lot of races awful lot of constructors titles while he's been there but in the recent years obviously you know their record is atrocious right I mean Ferrari have won 23 races in in the last decade, Verstappen has won 25 in the last two years alone. And Hamilton's won like 80 during the same period that Ferrari have won their last 20. So um, as Bonotto says, with the regret that this entails, I've decided to conclude my collaboration with Ferrari. I'm leaving a company that I love, which I've been part of for 28 years, with the serenity that comes from the conviction that I've made every effort to achieve the objective set. I leave a united and growing team, we'll see about that, a strong team ready, I'm sure, to which I wish all the best for the future. I think it's right to take this step at this time, as hard as this decision has been for me I would like to thank all the people who have supported me all this type of stuff so nice statement of course unfortunately I think for Bonotto I'm not really sure he deserved this necessarily and also it's just well indicative of the Ferrari disaster class of the last several years so um look just to keep in mind he says he resigns the reality is that they were going to get rid of him and um you know he's just jumped before he was pushed there's no way that he's actually got of his own decision basically here because he's leaving Ferrari right and that's what this implies he doesn't like imply here that he's going back to a technical position going back to just being the technical director and bringing a new TP like like Fred Vasseur for example not doing that he's gone he's out of Ferrari I think maybe he made that point when he became TP they're like look I'm not going to go back I'm not going to get humiliated or demoted if you want to get rid of me I'm going to be gone and that is um, exactly what is happening now these are the last several years as well for Ferrari think about it right in the last eight years what's happened at Mercedes what's happened at even Red Bull right Christian Horner's been the main man Toto Wolff's been the main man at um, Mercedes during all that dominant periods they had eight constructors titles in a row. Ferrari do this every few years and uh, arguably completely throws off any momentum they have. And this is arguably one of the worst times to get rid of Bonotto because like, you're going into an incredibly important development phase in the next couple of months going into 2023 where they were competitive this past season. They would hope to challenge again, uh, obviously a renewed Mercedes threat and Rebel will be the favourites for sure next season. And you're losing an awful lot of talent and experience around the team and you've got to replace that within the coming weeks. So he is going to leave his role on the 31st of December. He's still going to be there for the next few weeks, but or for the next month, really. But, um, you know, still, how convinced is he going to be, you would argue, given that he's not going to be with the team any longer? So the question then becomes, who is going to replace Bonotto at Ferrari? We talked yesterday about these crazy rumours of then talking to Christian Horner. Apparently, they didn't reach out to Christian Horner in the last week or so, which obviously would have been outrageous. But even this, I thought, was pretty outrageous. Supposedly, they reached out to Seidel and, and Horner. So Seidel is, of course, the TP over at, uh, at McLaren. Horner at Red Bull. They reached out to them last year, rejected Ferrari's advances, understandably because as we shall describe here, it's a bit of a poisoned chalice. You can't really like, you can't do anything right it seems. As Ferrari TB, you're just doomed to get sacked at some point in the future, even if, as Matteo Bonotto has done, succeeded arguably compared to some expectations this season, but maybe too many failures over the course of the year. So um, they wanted to get rid of Bonotto last year. They wanted to bring in a better TP. They couldn't. Bonotto probably knew this and therefore like this he 
season was probably going to be his last season, regardless of the circumstances. This is really the key issue, though, and why Ferrari, to me, seemed to be kind of in a crisis situation, because um, he was also their technical director, which Bonotto filled as kind of a double role. So not only do you need a TP, but you need a guy to head up the technical side of the, of the division, right? And that's where Mattia Bonotto done such a great job over the last several years. So given Mattia's engineering backgrounds, like, um, you know, this is going to be challenging to replace this particular role. You'd imagine they're going to try and um, effectively promote someone from within the organization. That's what is being discussed here. That, you know, hiring an outside technical director, especially someone who's not familiar with what Ferrari have done over the last few years, is very challenging. And um, especially because, you know, external technical directors subject to long gardening leaves, so they can't just join another team straight away. It's a bit of a tricky situation. That may also be kind of the case with Bonotto. It might not be so easy for him just to leave Ferrari and go and join Mercedes or another team or even Alfa Romeo or something just because, you know, they might negotiate some sort of gardening leave where he can't just go straight away to join another team, which is probably understandable. So, um, yeah, it's going to be tricky. Probably they're going to have to hire someone internally and promote them up to that role, but that's also not ideal. Now, this is the other part of it, that seemingly some people at Ferrari aren't happy with the state of Ferrari, which makes sense, right? If you've seen Bonotto just get sacked, effectively is what happened here, and um, you're thinking, you know, do I really want to work for Ferrari? Is this really a team that's going to be successful in the coming years? They had a great chance this season, squandered it, and, um, you know, what's going to happen next year, right? They might have a great car, but if their team is in shambles, then nothing's going to change for the near term, and they might not actually be able to deliver the results on track anyway with the car that they potentially could have again. So, um, you know, apparently several senior technicians and engineers might be leaving, right? This was talked about before Bonotto's departure was official, but apparently there's going to be significant restructuring. Now, however the next uh, team principal is, they're going to have to come in and make some changes, probably to the strategy team, you know, sacking a lot of those guys, bringing in some new guys. I think it makes sense. It's understandable. Of course, that's kind of what happened with Ross Braun when he came in alongside Schumacher with Gene Todd and these guys several years ago now at Ferrari. And uh, they probably need a similar thing to happen again. But if they're going to lose several senior technicians and engineers, then like, um, you know, this is not the time to be losing several senior technicians and engineers when you need all the power you can get over the winter break to prepare things for the upcoming season. So not a good look for Ferrari and Bonotto of course now has been sacked. So you would imagine that certain individuals might well either get forced out or will be deciding to leave over the coming weeks. Now um, that's the thing for the replacement for Bonotto. Replacing Bonotto is going to be a big challenge in the shorter term as is described here by you know John Noble. That given Bonotto's experience and kind of you know history with the team over the last several years and even last couple of decades, his you know comprehension with the car, the engine design, the direction they're taking, like um, just the concepts, the motivations of the team, especially with a renewed Mercedes threat at the end of this season, probably going into next season as well, and trying to get back on level pegging with Red Bull, like, um, you know, this is a bit of a disaster, right? Because Bonotto understands that better than anyone, and any new team boss coming in will have to catch up on an awful lot in a very short period of time. That is um, far from ideal, and even John Noble reckons, you know what, by the time the new technical director gets up to speed, and the new team principal, the fight for next season's championship might already be over. So they might just be like not writing off next year's championship, but if next year's championship doesn't go well, they have a rather good excuse, let's say. But um, you know, will a driver like Charles Leclerc be accepting of any more excuses? I wonder. So is Fred Vasseur going to be the man? Apparently, they are negotiating with Fred Vasseur, and it probably is going to happen. Now he needs the approval of his team. That probably should be okay. Alfa Romeo, or even you know, they're supplied by Ferrari with their engines and stuff, regardless. So probably he's going to be the man topping the list. And Ross Braun has basically said that he's not doing this again and I don't blame him to be honest but they would still need another technical director right alongside their team principal because you know Fred Vasseur and other candidates aren't going to be able to fulfill the double role that Mattia Bonotto did so that's the challenge. I know that some people have raised the question as to whether Sebastian Vettel could come into this role. This would be awesome at some point in the future. I highly doubt it's going to happen this season. Obviously Vettel wants to retire and step away and you know enjoy at least a good couple of years with his family. Now would I rule out Vettel returning to either motorsport in some form or another or being a TP for certain teams like um, you certainly would not. This would be really cool in the future but I you know somehow doubt it's going to happen at this time around. Now this is the then question then where does Bonotto go? As I said there might be some sort of gardening leave period where he has to you know basically just sit there and do nothing for a few months so that he can't just go straight into another team and bring all their information over. It's, you know of course he's not going to be able to bring their information over but you know what's in his head they can't like get rid of right that's just how it's going to be so that's kind of the, the theory here now a lot of teams are interested in Bonotto for very good reasons from you know the technical and the engine 
development side as well. Like he's obviously been an important factor in that over the last three decades, pretty much at Ferrari. The rumor has it that Alpine, Aston Martin, Aston Martin, of course, heavily hiring, Alpine as well, understandably, but also a top team are interested. Now, a top team, of course, means only one of two because, I mean, Alpine are here already. They're the fourth best team. Ferrari, he's leaving. So it leaves two options, Red Bull or Mercedes. Red Bull, to me, are an interesting one. They would be interested, I'm sure, in getting Bonotto. They've been hiring aggressively everywhere right now. I'm pretty sure over the last few years, they've literally been telling Mercedes engineers, like, hey, we'll double your salary if you come work for us. And they've got a few of them, and it's obviously worked out for them. Now, whether they can keep doing that, because salaries are included in the budget cap, and only, apart from the drivers, the top three salaries at an organization are excluded from the cap. So that's why all this drama from the cost cap this season about, um, you know, Adrian Newey not being an employee. They said that, oh, no, he's not an employee, he's a consultant, even though he's their CTO. But whatever. If they were to bring Bonotto in for big bucks, like, um, that would be affecting their budget cap, right? That would actually be a factor. Might be for Mercedes, but maybe less so. And given the fact that Mercedes, like, arguably their engine department has been one of the, well, not exactly the weakest, right? They've had the strongest engine, most reliable for the last several years. But going into this season, outside of the Alpine Renault engine, which has obviously been weaker and, you know, is more volatile as well, Mercedes have had the weakest package from the power unit side. Now, they've made some progress towards the end of the season, but there's no doubt that the Mercedes engine, you know, that was also in the Aston Martin and the McLaren, had some of the lowest top speeds over the course of the season. So you can certainly understand why Mercedes might be interested in Bonotto for his, you know, knowledge and experience in that area and bringing him on as a technical guy. Whether they can do that soon, I don't know. But yeah, imagine a world in which not only did Mercedes suck the life out of Ferrari after their victory, it seems, in Brazil, but um, and also kind of bring an end to Bonotto's tenure in doing exactly that. But now they might steal him and also some of his engineers as well. So it looks kind of like crisis time for me. And um, even just to mention this, a lot of former Ferrari engineers, James Allison and others, have ended up at Mercedes. So I wouldn't rule that out by any stretch of the imagination. But very much intrigued to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.